Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Th thank you for being patient, everybody, <laughs> audience. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed the episode. It's a bit of a game changer, so I kind of want to jump right in and get to the meat of that very pivotal ending scene that we just saw. <laughs> so I want to <laughs> so I want to start with Peter. Um, over the course of the last few seasons, your feelings towards the character of Liza have evolved a lot. And in this last scene, we especially saw a, just a, a switch totally flipped for you. What do you think happened in your life or in your character's life in that relationship that made you come to that decision right around Christmas? Hmm. Um, you know, I, I think that in, in my own experience, if, if I'm wronged, if somebody, if somebody wrongs me in some way, then for uh, a pretty extended time, that's all I see. Mm. I see, and I think that's a human thing, that, that person, whoever does something to us, loses dimension, right? And we see only that thing. The, they, they are the transgression. Ooh. And I think that, uh, and that can, that, that can even start to feel good because you feel so justified. And anger is very organizing in some way. Mm. You can be mad at somebody and, that, and you feel right. That's very grounding. Mm. Um, and yet, uh, and, and in this episode, I think that Liza takes on dimension for him again. And, she, and he sees and has uh, maybe not wanted to see until now uh, that there is an entire person other than what she did. Um, and that becomes impossible to ignore. Uh, and it becomes, <laughs> you know? And so, and, and I think that, and because he sees the entire person again, how he feels about her is impossible not to act on. Yeah. I think that's what happened. Absolutely. Well, yeah. That was so good. Uh, I'm gonna be like. Uh, and, and another part of this is that the character of Liza, <laughs> is that the character of Liza has also been evolving. I think we saw at the beginning of the show, there were two Lizas. There was the work Liza, the younger Liza, and then there was mom Liza. But now it feels like those two people are kind of becoming one. Do you, do you get that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I feel like that that has slowly been evolving through all the seasons, but especially in this season. I think um, Liza is, is she definitely has, is moving forward and, 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 and sort of claiming her power. And um, she's also like, I, I, I think the stakes for her as far as whether or not the truth comes out, yes, she wants to protect her work. Yes, that's important. But it's like, like the, the way he treats, the way that Charles treats her, she's like, you know what? And that, like, that's what I love about this last scene of the episode prior, where she's like, boom. And she's like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Enough. That suit. And, I, and I love that, because she could so easily just be like a victim and be like, huh. And she's like, no. So I, I, plus and that I love suit. that. Plus the suit. Begins, yeah. She's like, yeah. and plus the suit. But she's like, <laughs> she's sort of like, she's kind of like, this is who I am. And, and I, yes, I had to do this. And, but it's it's not doesn't define me, and I am more than just this lie, and um, so yeah. And I think that him also seeing her with her daughter and being able to see her as this fully uh, this full woman um, also is help, helps. And I think like the, by the last episode, Liza basically kind of gave up hope. Mm. So yeah. she wasn't sort of like trying to make it right anymore. She was just like okay. I, I'm, I, I gotta stop trying. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when stuff right. starts to happen in a way, you know? Yeah, and then, yeah. Cause she, the, up until then, she was like, please, please right. hear me, hear me. And then she was like, oh, right, yeah. this isn't working anymore, so. Well, we see, I think, all of the characters getting sort of more comfortable in their identities and in expressing their power. And the show also has taken some steps to address more topical issues. Um, for instance, you know, in early seasons, the character of 
Edward L.L. Moore was so funny, right? But then this season, that became more than funny, and you chose to address it and address the Me Too movement. How did that conversation come up for you guys, Darren? You know, I think organically it was just part of our show, and what it was, I mean, you, you could not ignore what was happening, and we had that character. You know, as writers, we were looking at, at the way we wrote that character in the past, that we were having fun with his behavior, and we were like, wow, we're sort of guilty of sort of uh, supporting that kind of, mm -hmm. um, you know, supporting that kind of behavior by sort of making, by sort of making light of it mm -hmm. as, as we did, and we were like, wow, we have to sort of take, we have some accountability also, mm -hmm. and we kind of re-examined that character, and it just, story-wise, worked for our show so well also. Yeah. Was that an interesting moment for you, Sutton, to have that closure with that story arc? Yeah, I mean, I was so excited that the writers chose to, to especially start the season that way. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, and it was interesting because it was like I was, Liza was put in that position of, Diana says to her, "You can tell us the truth; it'll destroy the company, but you know, <laughs> but we'll support you." And so it's sort of like that. What, what is the right thing to do? And even Liza's first instinct was to say, no, it's okay, he's just a dirty old man, it's okay, it's okay. But then she realizes that, no, this is not okay, and Charles does the right thing, even though it's the hard thing. And I think that that was really, it was awesome. It was awesome to be able to be a part of that. And to yeah, and we all talked, Peter and I talked about the story a lot and how it could play out and really to make it, make all the characters feel like they were, um, Accountable mm -hmm. um, for how they behaved in the past and how they're going to and how they're going to behave presently. Yeah. So Nico, um, your character, which is obviously a huge fan favorite, um, yeah, has some definite similarities with you as an actor and yeah. as a young creative who's lived in Brooklyn before. Uh, you have a romantic side. Um, Keep all of these things. <laughs> So can you tell us a little bit about the difference between Josh as we see him on screen and you as you are? Well, I used to live actually right across the street from the tattoo shop that we shoot at. So <laughs> that was really That's easy crazy. to go to work. Um, the difference between me and Josh, well, I think Josh, you know, we only know so much about Josh. He doesn't um, have a last Josh name. Josh does not have a last, last name. name. She took my punchline. <laughs> I was going right there. <laughs> he does, of course he has a last name. Yeah, we just don't discuss it. And should we reveal it right now? Yeah. No. <laughs> Brooks, he's my son. <laughs> uh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There, there, goes, yeah, there goes this. That's there, go, there, go, there goes there goes the Y'all heard it here first. <laughs> um, <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but I, the point of what I'm saying is, I think if we got to explore Josh in in his entirety, we would see a lot more similarities between me and him. Um, mm -hmm. I think Josh's heart is really what leads his entire life, and he he's been defining his, his wholeness on the love that he acquires from someone else. And um, this isn't even an answer to your question, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. Well, it's his, it's um, his, it's his it journey. It's his it's, yes, journey, yes, for sure. Yes, it's yeah. his journey. And, and, and I think where we see Josh this season is really like coming home and, and supplying that for himself. Uh, and there's some big surprises with Josh this season too uh, that haven't come up yet. Huge surprises. Yeah. <laughs> Really, and not just his last name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also think, you know, in terms of the similarities between him and you, I, I think I think that you are. <laughs> You're so cute. We're just going to talk amongst <laughs> ourselves. Um, I, I, I can't. think that I think that he 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 is. Um, I think that he, he's an explorer, mm. and that's one of the things that I that I love most deeply about you as a person is that, that is what you are. You're a <laughs> Um, you know, you, and I think that there, there, there are these, there are these different ways of to go through life. Whether what you, you, if you have a ladder, you can say, all right, I want to see how high I can climb, and then the other way is to see, I want to see how wide every rung is, mm. um, and I, and you're that, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I love that. 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 So, so one of you. We'll be over here. <laughs> yes, please. 
Um, so as a young person living in New York, growing up, consuming a lot of New York media, it's always fun for me to see how the city is portrayed. Um, and this is one of your hallmarks, is bringing to life different cities in the shows that you make. How would you define the New York of younger as a place that is maybe slightly different from real New York or from other shows that, that have come to life? I mean, before? I think that, you know, the New York of younger looks great, but it is, it is real New York. I mean, it's, New, York is, New York is pretty great, and I kind of feel like it looks, it looks like this show where we film yeah. all over the city. We film in Brooklyn a lot. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we sort of got gentrified out of our stage space. The first season we were actually filming in Williamsburg, and then it became, the studio became a high rise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the interesting thing about doing television is over, when you do a series over a period of years, you're able to really reflect the city and the culture. So we try to like, you know, we, we do sort of um, pay attention to what's happening in New York and how, this, and how the city's changing and how it affects the characters on our show. Because I feel like one thing about living in New York as opposed to any other city is the city really has an impact on your life mm -hmm. and on your story. And I feel mm -hmm. like the city um, does impact the characters of our show. You have a real sort of um, intimate relationship with New York when you live here. And I feel like yeah. the characters on Younger feel that way. Yeah, yeah. Is there a favorite place that any of you have filmed the show so far? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll say that wherever we film, there's always a moment for me of, wow. I'm always filming, like, I'm oh, always sorry, filming a show in New York City. <laughs> and it's whether it's, you know, with the Chrysler building in the background or the oh, public yeah. library in the background. And that courthouse that we did the opera. That was unbelievable. Oh, that, that room, which cool. used to be the, custom, the, the, the customs house. Yeah, the customs yeah. Those halls, yeah. beautiful. Oh, and then you get to see stuff where you've, where you've never been, like yeah. the shuffleboard like, place in Queens. Oh, like, oh my God. Oh, the shuffleboard place was amazing. And then, you can, no act, then you can take people there afterwards and act like, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. We shot a show here. Yeah. No, no, you don't even say that. It's like, yeah. just a shuffleboard yeah. place I know about. <laughs> unbelievably cool. Because the episode hasn't aired yet. But what were you going to say? I interrupted you. No, I was going to say most of the time I'm like, where are we? And I have to look on my phone and be like, where's the little thingy? Because I don't know where I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so one of the other big topics that's at the center of Younger is the concept of ageism um, and how that plays into especially women's professional lives. So Sutton, I'm curious, has any personal experiences that you've had as a woman in show business informed your approach to Liza and how she looks at ageism? I, when I was first starting doing the show, um, I'm, I'm, in four, I'm 43 now, but I was 39, I guess, when we started, and, um, and the concept of ageism hadn't really, I was like, what? Like, it was like <laughs> a new concept to me. For me, I've always thought, a, I've always kind of been very, like, cool with my age and, and I've, I'm excited. I've never, wa I've never wanted to chase youth or go backwards. I'm like super excited about what's ahead. Um, I have not had to deal with ageism yet, I guess, pointedly. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to navigate the road. Uh, we'll see. You know, I'm, talk to me in 10 years, maybe I'll feel differently, but um, I really am excited about what's ahead and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I have no desire to play um, the girl fresh off the boat, because mm. um, I've already done that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm excited about what's, what characters and what things are ahead of me. Yeah, and it is so cool to see. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so neat to see a representation of a woman who isn't always a teen in popular media as well. I know it means a lot to a lot of one, young women to have characters to look up to. So I think, was that something you were thinking of when you were creating the show, or? I mean, I think the, the double-edged sword is that you have a woman who has to pretend that she's right. <laughs> younger, which you sort of think, well, that, that isn't necessarily, you, want to, you don't want to sort of make that, in a way, something to aspire to, because it's not fair. Women shouldn't have to pretend that they're younger, but I think that's, it's, it's the premise of the show, but I feel like this is a character, because she got married so young, didn't really, she's, she gets a chance, at, in, in a way, recapturing her youth, and still do it, and, and I think what it says is that age is um, such, it, it's all about perception, mm -hmm. and it's sort of like, because she feels that age, she, people believe she's that age because um, it's, it's how she, it's, 
it's it's her truth as a character. I think it's it sort of is about being that age becomes irrelevant, just a number, you know, because she lives she lives a life as a younger person, and her her chronological age becomes irrelevant. Yeah, Nico, do you think that Josh sees age as irrelevant yet, or is he still working through? that question of age as an as a important aspect. Um, you mean his own age or? Uh, Liza's age. Liza's age, no. I mean, he's no. way past that. Yeah. yeah. If anything. <laughs> I'm like. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I think he probably feels closer to her age than he mm. does to his peers in his life mm. right now, uh, just given life experience and, right. you know. I mean, he's already had one wife that's left. <laughs> 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 yeah, now they're equal yeah, to marriages. Exactly. So. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so, a question for Peter. Uh, Charles is usually portrayed as like a really good boss in this show, but I'm curious if you have any decisions that you think Charles have made that you wouldn't agree with as a leader, or any <laughs> aspects of his leadership so that, that you admire. Like, it's, it's an interesting character. Um, because he's put between a rock and a hard spot in yeah. a lot, in a lot of a lot of scenes. Hmm. Hmm. I think the thing that comes to mind most is marketing a book with uh, not only an employ a, a female employee uh, in a fur bikini, and not only that, <laughs> but but somebody I care about. Yeah. Right. And that's and and so and that was that lent itself. <laughs> To, uh, to such such great story because we we all I mean that's what that's what that was why that why the first episode I think was so done so deftly is because the show took itself to task the show took Charles to task it took all of us to task for uh, you know in a sense going objectifying Liza obje yeah. objectifying Liza and going with the Sorry. the heinous <laughs> cultural flow that we've all gone with with and said like, ah, it's just the way that it's done. That's the way that books are marketed. That's the way the books are sold. Um, and there's a reason that that's the way that books are sold. And there's a, because of a broad participation in that sales tactic of not only books, but pretty much everything else. Everything. Um, and the same reason why we excused L.L. Moore's behavior um, with, ah, he's just a, you know, he's just a dirty old man. That's just the way that men act and, and all of that. And I, um, and you know, Charles as a character participated in that. Uh, and then, and it, and it, and it, it st stuck in my craw, stuck in my craw, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That, um, <laughs> that, that, uh, that in that, that in that first scene, we, we talked about it, we talked about it, that in, in, in the, uh, in the, in the first episode, I, uh, I wonder, is that his decision to actually let her go out in that, in that fur bikini? We were talking about how to play that oh, in the yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's Charles Michael Davis who then says, L.L. Moore wants you in the bikini, and they didn't use that cut to me, but I thought it, would, might have, it was good to have Charles react with, wait, wait a second, that is moving a little bit faster than I thought. I, I don't necessarily sign off on that. Yeah. Um, so, so, in, he, so in a has very answer. long answer to your question, um, <laughs> that 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 one that that one sticks out, but I think got examined in such a beautiful way because you're so ridiculously good at what you do. So, so just to be clear, it had nothing to do with the fact that the bikini was made out of fur. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it was just the bikini. That's the in general. second part of my the second part. Of so, <laughs> Peter, <laughs> give it to him. Um, um, is there a particular moment, uh, sorry, I guess the, the full season hasn't aired, so I don't want to put any spoilers out there, but from the first half, is there a particular moment that you see as an <clears throat> absolute changing point um, that sort of portends everything to come hmm. for your characters? <laughs> yeah. Are you going to talk about the coffee scene? The scene at the coffee counter? Um. That's my... That's the scene I think that changes everything with us. In, in this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you guys but, just saw it. No, that's what I think. Right. Because there's that's when we start talking about mm -hmm. Kit. Like, yeah. I there I say a that's line the, where I say she's, she's, my daughter. She's why I did. Mm. What I did. What I did. Yeah. And I think that that's a really important thing, for me to mm. tell you. And I feel like that's a huge a huge changing point in our relationship. Yeah. I also think one of the 
one of the beautiful things about the writing mm. is that the, the easy way would be to say, because this thing happened from now on, it will be like this. The course will be like this. And it's never that, mm. right? It's always the course is like this for a little bit. And then like in life, uh, it goes this way and this way and four steps backwards. And, and I think, and that's human, that's life. There, there, there are a few things, well, I don't know, uh, but I think that it, in, in life, it's not, well, from this moment on, it's now going to be like this. It's never a straight line. Like this. You know, <laughs> it's like this. Exactly. So good. Right. Ah! <laughs> <Nice>, guys. <laughs> My job is so hard. <laughs> Josh has a, um, a, a plant medicine ceremony at some point this Oh, season. that's, mm. yep. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. That yeah. changes a lot of things. <gasps> yeah. That's lots right. to look forward to then. Okay. Yeah. Um, if there's one overarching message that you envision fans taking away from Younger when you see them watching it, Darren, what, what do you imagine it is? Um, I don't know that I feel like that, I know it's a cliche, but the idea that um, age is a number and you can't, you can't define yourself by your age and it really is a number and you can't give up on your dreams and you can't, uh, and I think Lies is a character who just does not, doesn't give up on her dreams and doesn't, and doesn't let age define her when it, when it gets in the way. And I think, you know, I, and I love the idea that it's sort of this multi-generational love story between these sort of two generations um, and that uh, can relate. And, you know, they're different, but they really, they, they have a lot to learn from each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sutton and Char Charles. <laughs> I, I, just Charles. Char oh, no, I call him Charles too. <laughs> like, Easy to do. I get so. I have my whole family so at home call me Charles. It's not. <laughs> it's not same, weird. same, same, same. <laughs> so it, it was interesting that you mentioned the the two generations that are represented in the show. Do you think you guys have become more compassionate towards millennials um, over the course of this experience? <laughs> Because initially there was nothing but rage. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, absolutely. I mean, yeah. age, ageism goes both ways, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you can have a, you're like, oh, well, they're, you know, oh, yeah. they were so young. And, and we're, 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 I don't know. So it's like it goes both ways. So it's the show actually, and, oh, oh, season 17. But it's, uh, it's been really awesome. I've learned so much. And I have so much respect, yeah. you know, for, for everybody on the show. And I feel like it's been amazing mm -hmm. for everybody. Yeah. But yeah, I've learned a lot. Do you, do you think that each of you, your personal experiences have started to inform the characters more over the years that the st writers started writing that in more? Picking up on who they are? Yeah. Of course. You, know, you can't do a series. <laughs> actors can't do a series for this long, especially actors who have these kind of personalities and the writers aren't basically kind of like running towards them. <laughs> I mean, you know, we don't, yeah. you know, we don't do all the heavy lifting ourselves. We get a lot of help from, you know, who they are. And I think when you think about all these characters, I think they reflect a big piece of, um, you know, Sutton, Peter and Nico, they really do. I mean, I think they, they kind of meld at some point. What's your, to me they do. yeah. Uh, if you guys could give a 15 year prediction into the future, for your character, uh, <laughs> knowing nothing, you know. I'm like, you're 50. I mean, Charles 50. will have tattoos. Because <laughs> your son will give them to you for free. Because my son will give them to me for free, exactly. <laughs> Josh is like living on a farm in Wyoming with like seven kids and <laughs> so happy. He's writing books. He's just, mm. in, he's, this is my life that I'm talking about. <laughs> So I have no, I have no idea where yeah. Eliza will be. What do you think? I th <laughs> um, that was good. That was so that was good. That was good. That was so, just ask. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I trust um, you. I I feel like she'll still be. I feel like she'll still be working. I think she'll be like a a big deal mm -hmm. somewhere, mm -hmm. and she'll probably be a grandmother oh. in fifteen years. Wow! That's funny. 15 years. Oh. 
That's funny. That's right, because I have an old daughter. That's, That's right. right. You started so early. You all right? And have seven more kids. That's right. Oh, my, because we'll yeah. be married. Oh. And I'm nice. living in Wyoming, oh, and, owning um, a really... Lots of ways this could unfold. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that oh. note, I think we're going to take some audience questions. Um, People have submitted. Don't clap it for cards. yourself. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? The clapping for them. Audience questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're somewhere. Or not. We could keep talking. In the meantime. Um, I saw someone with the cards, though. Yeah. They've run away. Oh, no, here, here they, they come, are. Here they come. I knew it. Okay. Here they are. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, this one is for Darren. Do you develop your story arc season by season, or was there an overall story arc that gets broken down each season? Season by season, and each season are kind of the same thing, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we develop, we, we develop them. <laughs> that wasn't snarky at all. <laughs> no, I was just trying oh. to. It was a light read on whoever wrote that question. I guess or if I you're asking, do we, do we have, a, are they planned in advance for many seasons? Yeah. No, they are not. We figured it out. We figured out season by season. We basically paint ourselves into a corner by the, at the end of every season and have some ideas about where things could go. I think we like to kind of challenge ourselves um, and keep things, keep us on our toes, the writers. I think we like to stay ahead of the audience as much as possible. Um, although I think the audience got, you know, they got a little frustrated these first. <laughs> Lies and Charles are like, move it along, people. Let's. But um, you know, I think we had to we had to respect the real, uh, you know, emotions of these characters and who they are as people. And it's like, sorry, you're just not going to like forgive something like that, as Peter eloquently put it. I love I loved your response about how he, how Charles processed all this. And I felt and you know I felt that there was this period of processing that is was really going to be necessary for somebody who was in love with someone that they felt was, just, that they suddenly feel was completely deceiving them. Um, but we have, yeah, we don't have like, we don't have like two seasons from now figured out. Okay. No. And between seasons, both two times now, the, the, the world, world has changed. shifted under our feet. Mm -hmm. There was the election mm -hmm. uh, between three and four, me too between, no. Me, me too, between four, four and five. five. Mm -hmm. So we're. So uh, what's next? Yeah. So what's next? Yeah, <laughs> between five and six, yes. we'll see. Yeah. What has been the most fun or exciting scene to shoot? The yogurt, for sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was there that day. You, that was. That was hilarious. a marathon, oh y'all. A full marathon. Hilarious. <laughs> As he looks back. Do you want to unpack that a little bit? Nah. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> there were there were some outtakes. There were some outtakes. Recall. Yes. Okay. okay. Loopers. W one quick little story. No, never mind. I no. can't. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So so there was a prosthetic member that that the prop guy brought to me in the middle of a take, and um, Claire, Phoebe, who was playing Claire, didn't know that it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, so in between one take, I'm like, I got the yogurt tub, and I, and I have the prop just like in my sleeve, and all of a sudden it just falls out <laughs> <laughs> on the floor, and it was hysterical. <laughs> Absolutely hysterical. Yeah. So it was a marathon. A marathon. Hard to beat that. Just another day at work. <laughs> and... <laughs> you got you guys yeah, top that? So many. Uh, no, I can't. I can't top the yogurt. Um, <laughs> I've, had, I've had so many amazing. Uh, it, this has just been like a dream job, and I've uh, I've, I've had so many incredible things. The the, the the scene that actually comes to mind um, was uh, in Ireland because we shot in Ireland last year, and that was. And we shot, uh, Debbie and I shot the scene in the sheep's meadow. Oh God, and um, <laughs> where she falls in the, bo the bog. Mm -hmm. That was like, it was the most incredible day. We were outside mm -hmm. dodging sheep shit and there were horses <laughs> like galloping in the fields and there was a drone like filming. They, it was just, you know, that's like a pinch me moment. You're like, mm -hmm. we're in Ireland and it was just the, one of the coolest, coolest experiences ever. So, note to Darren, more international travel. Yeah, <laughs> no, because, yeah, he didn't get to go. I didn't get to. I'm not angry. We got to see, see it on Instagram, though. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. You don't even have Instagram. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's why, because I, I didn't want to see it. Because I didn't want to be subjected to it. 
on. <laughs> but I, in, 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 in the answer to you, the funnest things to shoot, sometimes the, the, the funnest moments are, are a, a, not a scene of note in a way, but the moment where it, it just all goes to shit and you can't stop laughing, <laughs> right? And, you, and, which, and which he's I, the worst. And, I, and I'm the and worst. And it's our greatest pleasure to make you laugh. And, it's, and, it, and so that, that is those moments when you're with people you love, Laughing, mm. yeah. work, and usually uh, it's in the conference room. And it's usually in the conference room, which is which which is this vortex of suffering for all of us. <laughs> um, and it's hot, and the air conditioning doesn't work, and the camera angles, and then one person goes, and, and then we're just, all off yep, a cliff, and terrible. there's just nothing better. And we're back in kindergarten and being told to be quiet because we have to get the day done. And it's great. It's just absolutely fantastic. Um, so. <laughs> yep. All right, I think this is a good one. How much was Liza's bonus? <gasps> it was $5,000. At least that's what the prop check said. Fine. Right. Right. Yeah, maybe. You didn't try cashing it? Very nice. I, didn't, I didn't try cashing it, although, I, well, no. no I, do, well, I do have a fake Liza ID. I could try it. You should go. You get it there. You should go. You go. Yeah. Um, $5,000. It's pretty good. Right? If you could have a, um, another guest star, who would it be? Uh, oh. I got a great one. Oh, who? Oh, go, 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 go. <laughs> so Debbie is very good friends with Madonna. And right. we've been talking, or Debbie and I personally have been talking about what it would look like <laughs> to bring Madonna in and like Debbie and Madonna have like a love story going on. Right? Wow. Well, hold on, it gets better, it gets better. <laughs> And then Josh has a threesome. <laughs> with Maggie and Madonna. These are, these are Nico's stories. You know, Madonna would be playing a character, right? <laughs> yeah, Madonna, she already is. <laughs> wow. I can't top that. Can't top that? that. No. Can't top that. I like that. That's good. Here we go. <laughs> I love it. He's 12. He's <laughs> And then Madonna. And Madonna. Um, Josh only has one name too. Josh and Madonna, y'all. Meant to be. Meant to be. Um, what are your favorite shows other than your own right now? Mm -hmm. Pose. My, the what, what show? Pose. Pose. Oh, I haven't watched it. Oh, so I haven't seen good. Pose yet. My favorite show of all time is Gilmore Girls. Yeah. Hands down. But right now I'm watching The Shield. I know, my <laughs> husband's making me watch it. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm so weird. It's a good spectrum. I know, That's right? Like, right? Right, you know. Yeah. Anyway, what about you? Um, I, I, I'm, because I've, I feel like I've missed such a big part of the culture, uh, The Wire. I mean, I'll go yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just so that I can say that I watched The Wire. That's, but that's it's, next that's, right, the exactly. That's so. Uh, can we rewind so I can re-answer? Right. Thank you. SVU. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Right. <laughs> Nico, do you have a go-to right now? Pose, I said. Pose. Oh, pose. Yeah, yeah. On FS. And Darren, anything you're watching? You know, I watched. Uh, you know, mentioned Gilmore Girls. I saw the. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which I thought was oh, so good. I love, I also love that it was only, I think it was like eight episodes, so it was like doable, yeah. you know what I mean? And it was really, really good. Yeah, awesome. Um, ooh, what would be your ultimate storyline if you could write it yourself? Maybe you can start with Nico on this one. I think you have a more uh, fleshed oh, out vision. I know. <laughs> I I'm sure listening, by you. the way, because we need stories, so. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time. Uh, I feel like I should pass this question. Okay. <laughs> Madonna I on a farm in <laughs> Wyoming. I well, got a three-way with Madonna and Maggie. You aren't, that's the yeah, only I already thing. said it. That's what I'm saying. But honestly, I, tr I trust you guys so m You guys have yeah. never let us down. And so yeah. the writers are just so inventive and incredible. And I, I, as far as Liza goes, I'm like, I'll, I'll do whatever you tell me Aww. to do. So. I have to kiss you for that. Aww. Thank you. So one of the interesting things Younger does is satirizes modern authors um, in the moment. 
and we've seen some of those representations. Who do you think Empirical would want to sign next? Nico oh. Tortorella. <laughs> nice. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Huh. A poetry book, y'all? <laughs> All of it is you. Josh already has it. Great idea. <laughs> what about Liza's tell-all? Yes. Ooh. Nice. What about Liza's what? Tell-all. Tell -all. Oh, tell-all. Well, that's how Liza's the show ends. Story. We realize this has all been a book that's been written, and we're all actors playing the parts. <laughs> New children's book division. Yeah. Millennial, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Each has something to offer. Some cookbooks for <laughs> Debbie. Right. Exactly. A Broadway book. Yes. <laughs> There's the moment. Yes. There it I said it I back then. I did it. Oh. <laughs> All right. We said before we came out that you, you'll do something goofy, I'll be long-winded, and, and you double cry. cry. Yeah, and it, it all happened. It's there all we go. You got it all. We you got it all. That's how we roll. Madonna was the, the bonus. Right, there <laughs> Darren, do you think this show could work anywhere other than New York, or is it a New York-specific show? I mean, the publishing business is in New York, and I, I do feel like there's something about um, the whole looking at millennial culture in New York is so, it's just such, there's so many great characters, it's so, it's so specific. I mean, it exists everywhere, mm -hmm. but I feel like because of publishing and all that, I feel like New York is just, you know, it couldn't, it couldn't be anywhere else yeah. in my mind. Yeah. How is finding love different in your 20s versus your 30s and your 40s? I'm still in my 20s, so. <laughs> and those in your 50s, they don't even mention, right? Yeah. They don't. <laughs> That's... Yeah, that once you're 50, it's like, right, well, no. <laughs> oh gosh. Mm. Uh, I think the, for, oh, I'm yeah. suddenly speaking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a mic on, Spotlight. oh no. <laughs> um, they, I, I mean, for me, I can only, yeah. So for me, I, I feel like the idea of love um, and relationships just evolved and changed. Uh, if, I, I, I feel like my relationship now, I couldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to have in my 20s because um, it, it means something different to me now. It's, a, it's more about family and partnership and, and love is, a, is, is deeper than just, um, it isn't fleeting, it's long lasting and, and uh, it, it just has a different resonance. And I, 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 I feel like I found that in my 30s just because of, life experience mm -hmm. and, um, and having to go through many different types of relationships in order to find the one that I knew would, that I wanted to share my life with and create a family with. And I, I, I don't think I would have understood that mm -hmm. earlier just because of being alive longer and having, and um, I think my heart needed to weather uh, mm -hmm. a few wrongs to find the right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think obviously the definition of love always changes, um, but it's so interesting that question immediately implies finding love in another person and not necessarily finding love for mm. yourself and in yourself. And, that is true. And I think that, that throughout, I have to go through yes, that. Yeah, throughout, I have to love myself uh, first. Yeah, that, that love for yourself changes as you get older and respect for yourself, mm -hmm. and hopefully it continues to grow and to grow and to grow. I mean, that's why we're here, right? Um, yeah. Mm. So. Amen. There was a um, there was a there was an article in the Times recently about how enamored we are with beginnings, with mm. that with that question of what it's like to find love, right? Um, and and very few, you know. The, the, and when we ask each other, we say, "How'd you meet? How did how'd your relationship begin?" But very rarely <laughs> do we. Do I, I don't know. I've ever. I don't know if I've ever been asked, "What has it been like to be married for a long time?" We don't ever. What, what's it? What is that like to be to get, together with someone for a long time? And I think that, um, and th there's a, a one of my favorite poets, if not my favorite, if, if not my favorite poet, his name is Jack Gilbert, and he has a beautiful line um, in one of his poems, and it's and it's. Um, it says, you break through marriage into marriage. Mm. Uh, and and it, there's such a process, and I think that you break through love into love, that there is, mm -hmm. that you live, and then you discover um, that underneath the place where you have lived is a whole other cavern, and you break down into that, and you go, oh my, oh my, I didn't even know this was here. Mm. And then you, uh, I think that you keep moving uh, 
into more interior rooms in another person and then um, that, that have been closed for whatever reason because they're guarded because it just takes time to come in. Uh, and I think that if you um, can, uh, I think there are, there are beautiful riches that, that develop in a long relationship mm -hmm. uh, and they are, they are uh, hard and uh, incredibly rewarding and, and wonderfully uh, mysterious things to explore. Mm -hmm. I love so. that. Mm -hmm. I love that, the image. Beautiful. Um, Liza is a very strong-minded, independent woman, and a wonderful example of the women of today. Uh, can you draw many parallels between Liza's life and your real life that have helped you connect with your character better? Yeah, one of the things that, um, I don't think Liza is uh, cynical. Mm. I think she's, um, and I, I don't think I am. Mm. Um, I think I, I, the things that we share, Liza looks at, at, at the world and so do I with optimism. Um, yes, she's, she has obstacles, but even through the obstacles, I think she's optimistic and hopeful and, um, and even through her setbacks, she's, she, she lets a no not defeat her, but let it be the fuel, the fuel for her fire. And I think I'm the exact same way. Um, I, uh, and and I, I love that she is, um, one of the things I love about the show is the sh that I feel like the show is, isn't cynical. Right. It's, yeah. Um, Thanks. yeah, I mean, and I, I feel like you do such an amazing job of bringing Liza, uh, that spirit that you Sutton have inhabits the whole show. Yeah, there's a causality yeah. there. I mean, that's a, I well, mean, it, it, you, you, are the re, you are the reason for the tone of the show. Oh, I guess, yeah, okay. <laughs> No, but, but no, it's a, really, you know. No, I, but, but I, and I, so, the, so therefore, I, 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 I'm excited that I am the person playing this character, because yeah. I love being able to portray her that way, as opposed to, you know, I don't, uh, it, it, I, I feel that it's, um, it's nice to have like a, a youthful optimism. Yeah. And I think that in addressing millennial culture or any topic that you take on in writing or in any art form, uh, it, is, it is so easy to be cynical. It, it, we almost default nowadays to cynicism. Even when we, when we look at something beautiful, right, we say, well, we automatically we walk in and one of the things we say is, well, that's not beautiful. Where did that come from? To say, you know, that, that's a oh, bit of yeah. cynicism. Or when we see each other, we go, shut up. <laughs> like, what is that? Where does that come from? So and, 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 and it's like, when did we start saying shut up as a greeting? It's weird. <laughs> um, and, and so, and, and, and um, the, wait, the, hold on. The, Can the you show just wrap this, what that means for a second, the shut up? It's like, it's just don't talk for one second while I take it all in. <laughs> That's what that means. Okay, now I understand that one. But okay, thank you. Um, and, I, and that's one of the things that, that I okay. celebrate and that we all celebrate about the show is in that, that it is imbued with this optimism and this lack of, uh, this lack of cynicism. So. Yeah. And the, I think the characters generally on the show really care, care for each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, in, and, I, and us as a cast, we all genuinely care right. for each other. We all really light, love each other. Yeah. And what a joy right. that is to come to work and to you know, yes. be among people you truly love and respect. And root for. And yeah. root for. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so awesome. And I know that that's rare. So thank you yeah. for casting well, us <laughs> and putting us together. Thank you guys for you know, for being wonderful, because these are, I mean, it's a, it is a wonderful cast, and it just, it's as, every, I mean, and I know it sounds like hearts and flowers, but it just really, <laughs> everybody, the whole cast is just, um, it's just such a great energy to be around all the mm. time. Yeah. So, mm. we, we do have fun, I mean, yeah, and I do. feel we like, and fun. I feel like it comes through in the show, you know, I mean, I feel like it makes you feel good watching it, because everybody is feeling good doing it. Yeah. But we're definitely your favorite three. I mean, you could say that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why we're here. The original three. The rest Come didn't on. get invited. <laughs> um, a question for Nico. What's the most surprising thing about playing Josh? Uh, the most surprising thing. Um, you know, that whole uh, 
genderqueer storyline that we had mm -hmm. last week or two weeks ago or whatever it was, um, I really didn't think much of it when we were shooting it. And gender identity and expression play such a huge part in my own life. And um, to, when I was able to watch that episode, I felt like I was able to understand the person that didn't get it a little bit more. Mm. Um, and that was really, really special for me in the work that I'm doing right now. So, yeah. Did you have conversations with, with um, writers or when you got that script, was there a certain reaction you had to how it was being portrayed? Um, I, I, n n well, I think Miriam directed that episode and reached out to me if, I, if any of my friends were actors and wanted to mm -hmm. you know, audition for the role. And I put a few different people, I sent a few different people to, to her and to you, Darren, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but I was just happy that it was there, yeah. Yeah. you know? I think like looking back, the only thing that I like got a little bit of a, about that episode, we haven't had this conversation at all, but we're having it right now. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, was was Lauren's line about the word bisexual when she goes, "Oh, we don't say that word here." Like that is inherently some form of bi erasure that exists everywhere in the media, not just like here. And that word is is really powerful and still is really powerful. And pansexuality and fluidity and all of these other other words for me fall. I think she, I think by the way I think Lauren was just trying to say there was just a bigger expression of yeah, it all yeah, yeah. than well, just labeling like, someone as bisexual right but that's what's happening like everywhere for the bisexual community right now um, and so that was the only part I was like oh we love bisexual we love bisexuals I wish I knew at the time yeah no, no it's fine we're having this conversation now I know. next time next time <laughs> 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 but also, like, when I think I read that episode, I was in a different place in my own theory work, too. And, like, that, you know, it's all, it, it's all happening so fast. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I love it. I'm just going to keep doing that. Yes. You're so good. <laughs> what inspired the Sound of Music family tradition? Is there a backstory here we need to know? I will tell I you the really story. I was actually, I don't know, you guys, I was at a friend's birthday last year, and out of the blue, like, like a yodeler broke in, this woman yodeling with a guy on an accordion, and it was just the strangest thing that made everybody <laughs> so happy. And, and then um, somehow made that connection Christmas. I mean, we, got it, we finally got to hear Sutton Foster sing. <laughs> Even though it was Liza. Um, so it's just sort of, it sort of grew from there. And trying to find something that was just the most, like as Peter expressed, the most surprising way to be taken <laughs> off guard by somebody and see them in the just most, just ridiculous, endearing <laughs> light. And I just sort of like, that was just it. Yodeling, thank, and we got the rights from The Sound of Music, which was Woo! amazing. Oh, I mean, just all of that. And you know, when you, do these things sentimentally, you know, you, you steal from the sound of music. We all have memories of the sound of music. It makes us cry just to hear the lonely goat herd, you know? So it's like we're kind of like, we're stealing a lot of that, making it work emotionally for us. Um, so that's just another piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Um, final question. Sutton. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who do you think Liza's gonna end up with? And it to all of you. Not fair. Not fair. <laughs> so unfair. <laughs> because I think that Josh and Charles both, ooh, that's such a hard question. <laughs> it's hard to pick like the, who is the happily ever after or, mm. you know, I, 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 don't, I don't even know if Liza knows now. Um, this is definitely the season of Charles. I mean, I'm really excited to sort of see where Liza and Charles go. Okay. We Give me something. Take Come on. It. This is not like, this is with me and Josh them, all right? Josh is not chopped liver this season, Josh by the way. Josh is not chopped liver this season. No. I just think that Liza <laughs> hasn't had the, op they have, the, these, these guys have not had a, um, opportunity yet. It's always been like, will they, won't they, ooh, ooh, and then something comes in the way, and, and then they're like, oh, no. So it's been like this thing. 
you know, for five seasons. I know, I'm doing the goofy thing. And then, so. That was like a summary of season one to four. Anyway, so, yes, it's, you know, finally, they were they're like their moment. But Josh brings out something in Liza that she, it's different. And so, it's hard. It's hard to pick. Yeah. I, all I say, the, the best thing, if you're going to pick a team, is that I say Team Liza, is that I want Liza. <laughs> Neither one of these guys is the missing piece to her puzzle. Mm -hmm. And it can't be. It, it, it's like, oh, Liza's complete if she's with Team whatever. No. <laughs> but Liza's got to be with Fine Liza. And that's what I, I think is, she went into this whole thing not to, not to be in a relationship. She went in this to be, uh, to reclaim her, her work, to take care of her daughter, to um, do something she feels passionate about, and that's, that has to always be her MO. Um, these guys are wonderful distractions, <laughs> but they can't be, <laughs> they can't be the answer, right? Um, so we'll see. Amen. On that note, thank you everyone for coming out today.